Good evening and welcome to We're Not Really Here. Full time at the Etihad, Manchester City 2, Bournemouth 1. A quite nervy ending there here for the final 5-10 minutes. Um, joining me, we've got Natalie and also Sean Gota and Jolene Lescott, who are our special guests. Uh, Sean, we'll, we'll start with you. A very nervy ending and actually it felt like Bournemouth maybe with a stronger team come to the end of that second half. Yeah, I think we were just fortunate that Bournemouth weren't a team in form, you know, strikers with confidence that, that would have put perhaps even won the game as opposed to losing because the last, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, I probably, I'll put that down as probably the worst period I've seen in City because we were really hanging on. There was no, you know, uh, Roger come on and we thought, okay, can, we, we'll settle it down, but there was no rhythm in, our, in, in terms of keeping the ball. So it became, we were giving the ball away after, I don't know, it must, must be like four or five passes. Mm -hmm. Probably a little more than that, maybe five, six passes. But again, it was a transition of the ball, which is not like us. And, and in the end, we were just sort of hanging, hanging on. What would you attribute that down to, Jolene? Because for a team that's exuded confidence and composure, it wasn't really on show there in the second half. Yeah, I don't think the rhythm was there throughout the night. There was periods in the first half when it just wasn't the cohesion that we, we've come accustomed to mm -hmm. seeing. But also, Bournemouth are fighting for their lives. They are trying to stay in this league and City have condensed second spot so the mentality is a little bit different we've seen it again with arguably with the Liverpool game in, in there obviously clinching the title and so the, the mentality of the uh, and the approach um, it's strange to see because it's not something I've seen complacency creep into any of the performances even even the defeats like there's been mistakes but there's never kind of like patterns of play where you're like that doesn't look familiar mm -hmm. you know what I mean so it was strange but credit to Bournemouth uh, but luckily City were, were good enough to hold on and we, we started the game with those two changes. We saw Eric Garcia coming on for Kyle Walker to begin with, which we think probably might be an injury or you're looking ahead to, to Saturday. He's looked very composed at, at centre-half in the last few games, but um, didn't look quite as comfortable out on the right, Julian. Yeah, different. For a centre-half to go out there um, and be faced in, in an area which is uncomfortable to them. Um, I've, I've been out there in, in the full-back areas, and if you're not familiar with being 1v1, it's difficult because there's a lot more space to cover. Um, your body position is totally different. So we've seen when he got faced up, he, he got caught square a couple of times when he wasn't in control of the situation. He wasn't saying, you're only going line, you're only going inside. He allowed Josh King at the time to kind of go one way and fake and go the other. So as a defender, you kind of need to learn how to, to manage that situation, even though you haven't got the ball. And then looking towards the other end of the pitch, Sean, in that final third, it just seems like we we couldn't didn't have those final two three passes that usually City are so good at finding. Yeah, there was a period when Sterling broke late in the game. He's under so much pressure that last sort of ten minutes, we had that opportunity where Sterling broke, but then it broke down. You know, we kept possession. They got behind the ball, and it's you know, Jesus went off. There wasn't. You know, there wasn't that main focal point. And I mean, earlier we were gassing up the players, saying how great it is. Again, normally when we, we take off a striker, it just still flows. And I, I, I'm probably going overboard, but I think that that, that 10 minutes, probably the worst I've seen from City, because normally they're so in control, uh, so dominant in possession. And when, when we broke, when the odd occasion, it looked like, okay, this looks a little bit like City. But they were just, again, on the front foot, pressing us back, pressing us back, pressing us back. And we made use of the five substitutions that, that you can do now um, post-lockdown. Um, what did that tell, tell you, Jolene, using all five of them? Do, do you think we are sort of think, looking ahead to the FA Cup semi-final or just it's a busy time? Let's Both. switch it up. Yeah, I think there's a lot of sports science that goes into it and the decisions are not always tactical, technical decisions. They're due to bases of players getting fatigued. Like, we've got to look, Jesus is our only recognised striker, so we yeah. don't want him going into... Saturday's game when it's a, a knockout game kind of thing to, to having played 90 minutes when he doesn't have to at the start and when he came off it was 2-0 so there's a lot of more factors that come into to using the substitution some of them again if, if Kyle Walker hopefully he's not injured that due to him playing a high volume of game and a high number of minutes recently Foden um, is, is a man, of course, who we've just been constantly impressed by, impressed by. But I know, Jolien, you've been looking for a game where he kind of isn't in the heart of it and actually just has a more of a normal game of football, which we had tonight. And he, he didn't feel as effective as he has been in previous games. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, and, and I wasn't, I don't want that to happen. I just want people to get used to that not yeah. being the normal. Like, the normal for Phil Foden isn't going to be a goal and assist every game. There's going to be games when it doesn't quite click. And we've seen that tonight. There was passes that were, that were going off, touches that quite, weren't quite, 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 there, what, quite there. Sorry, But in the final minutes, we've seen him go through two defenders and get a chance. So we know the quality is there. But just for kind of expectation reasons, I, I'd like to see, not like to see, but 
I don't mind that performance because there's no consequences. We won the game. Phil Foden's got another 90 minutes under his belt, which is what we want to see. Uh, one man who returned to the starting lineup ahead at the start of this game was John Stones, and we can hear what he had to say at full time. Defenders hate conceding, and you're clearly annoyed by it. What yeah. happened for the goal? Um, all I remember was uh, the, we, we, we tried to play a high line. We always we always have. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, I felt. Uh, Are you in trouble from the minute he's sort of in behind you? No, we we get told all all sorts of different things and um, cover the area, cover spaces, and and it got to that. It was a great ball. Um, I'll have to have a look, another look at it to be honest, but yeah, it's just um, I think because we we've set so, such good standards over the over the season. Um, and we've worked hard on this over the, the, the past few weeks, so obviously from um, our defeat at Southampton. Um, and yeah, we've, we've come off, off the back of that with two, two great victories, scoring a lot of goals, two clean sheets, and we I think we just take that pride that we want to keep the clean sheet run going. It certainly made you earn your money tonight, didn't they, Bournemouth? Yeah, as defender. I said, yeah, uh, credit to them, the, the players who, who came on as well for them, caused, another, caused us another uh, threat. And... Um, I felt we, we we were great going forward, and when we got our chances, we, we took them in the first half. We had um, a lot again in the second, and um, we should have put the game to bed maybe a few more times. But that, that's that's football. And as I say, overall, I think I'm I'm really pleased with how, with how everyone defended. Um, I'll probably cool down a bit after watching. <laughs> Uh, the goal, but yeah, overall, I'm really pleased. Now, personally, where do you feel you're at in terms of your form and your confidence? Obviously, there was lockdown, but it just feels like a season for a lot of it, and due to injuries as well, it just hasn't got going for you. Yeah, it's really now. frustrating, personal, uh, from a personal perspective. Injury, uh, reoccurrence, then everything, little things coming back from lockdown, got injured a few days in. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been frustrating. You know, I've tried to stay positive and and be ready when I've been called upon, and and I feel I have been um, coming back from uh, after lockdown, getting fit again, and then coming back in and playing against some tough opponents. So feel fit, feel ready, and and uh, ready to fight for obviously the FA Cup at the weekend, and then we go into the Champions League and a few more league games. So um, just staying fit and healthy, and I uh, feel I'm on the right track and. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be um, getting that consistency of, of, of playing and, and keeping my fitness. Lastly, does it feel like big moments in your career, actually, trying to force your way back into the City first team for Champions League, for FA Cup, maybe, you know, who knows what will happen next season as well? I think for me, it's, uh, it's, it's very simple. You know, the manager, what he asks of us... Um, to keep training hard every day, keep bettering ourselves, and, and when called upon, because the, the squad changes that much, I think, um, as you've seen over the, the, the past few weeks, we've, we've changed the, the team basically every other match, and um, that's why everyone's so key here, and um, I think that's why we've been so successful as well. Thank you, John. Thank you. Nice to see you, mate. You too. John Stowe's there giving us his thoughts at the full-time whistle. Um, let's talk about the goal, because, um, Julian, I was, I was sat with you and, you, and you were saying, actually, that maybe, possibly, that Otamende could have done a bit more to cover his partner. Yeah, um, as a defender, like a lot of people are going to look at that and, and see John Stone's recovering and, and assume his man's got in and he can't get there, where, as a fellow defender, if, if a striker runs in behind my centre-back partner, mm -hmm. I know that's my responsibility to track him. He can't see him unless he runs in front of him. So it's going to be virtually impossible, especially when he's running forward and I have to turn and then run back. And so in regards to John Stones being able to catch that, I, I catch him, I, it's difficult. But also, it's a great ball. It's a great run. There's obviously something they've worked on. You know what I mean? So we need to appreciate what Bournemouth brought. But in regards to John Stones taking responsibility, credit for him for doing that. But as a defender, I'm not necessarily thinking that's his fault. Mm -hmm. That's some insight, you know. Yeah. I think that's some real good insight because... I always thought that defenders, I always thought it would be sort of Stone's uh, responsibility to look and think, okay, is yeah. he going to run? When's he going to run? He's ran. But I, I'm really intrigued, not intrigued. I love that because you've given me a whole nother dimension. But, but, and, and why I simplify it for you now, Sean, is because do you ever look at the center half behind you when you're making that run? You only see the person in front of yeah, you. Right, yeah. And it's the same for defenders. Yeah. So 
I can't assess where he is if the ball's coming from this direction. So I have to actually look at the front line and the person, the defender behind, has to look at the front line as well. Yeah. Now, you can please shoot me down for, for, for saying this, but it, that is an occurrence that I've seen kind of happen throughout the last couple of seasons, that the one thing that seems to undo us is that ball in behind the back. Is there a way to counter it, or is it just you just kind of, if it's a great stop ball, it's ball tough being to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Stop, stop in the ball stop getting played, source, obviously, of course, but right. also... Yeah. If the ball's that good, like, there's so much space, he just has to put it into an area. And as you said, the striker doesn't have to necessarily be quicker than you. He's running onto the ball. He's running forward. I have to turn and run back. And unless I am Raheem Sterling and that sort of a person is me, <laughs> then I'm not catching you, regardless of who it is, you know what I mean? So it, it's difficult to stop. It, the, obviously, the, the, the initial pass is the one, but in regards to stopping that passage of play, we've seen it a few weeks ago at Chelsea. The ball got played behind, behind Fernandinho and Tammy Abraham was in. And if yes. the ball's that good, you just don't recover as defenders. You just don't. We've, we've talked on this show and we've talked um, a, a lot in the, in, in the media and a lot of speculation about who City are going to buy in, in the transfer window, in the summer months. And we always talk about a central defender to, to go to partner up with, with Laporte. Psychologically, if you're John Stones and you, 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 you've, you know, you've been touted as one of the, you know, one of the greatest you know, young defending talents in the country and you're striving to still play for England, psychologically, how do you think that affects him constantly hearing that we need to replace him, essentially? We need to have someone that's better than him. To go. Yeah, you send back. Back. Well, yeah, it'd send be, it back. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be difficult. Obviously, no one wants to hear that they're, they're going to be replaced or kind of new players coming in. I had that kind of throughout my career at City. There was players being brought in to kind of play with Vinny and stuff like that. So that won't be nice. The hardest part for John Stones, I would take, is when Fernandinho would be picked ahead of me knowing that he's not centre-half. All the centre-halves coming in, we're fighting for, and it's healthy competition, as strikers do, as wingers do. You just have to get used to that. But to see... A midfielder being picked in big games, if I'm fit, that's what would hurt me the most. And it happened again with me, just Xavi Garcia at times being picked. I'm like, I don't care how good he he's at centre-back, I believe I'm a better centre-back. And that's the way John Stones would be thinking. Kept drawing Botang out of the team. Hey, let's not forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> he was injured. He was injured, though. <laughs> John, do you, do you feel like we've, we've seen the best of John Stones and seen him fully fulfil his potential yet in a City shirt? Well, Stones has, has, has been here a while, and he has, he has the quality. The, the one thing that lets, that for me, that lets him down is in a game, he has a moment where he gives away a ball, and that's because he's, he's passing, trying to pass through midfield, and it gets intercepted. And you look at Laporte, you look at Van Dijk, these players, they go like, 12 games before you see that, that one mistake, yeah. that ball into midfield. And, and that's the one thing I think that will just get Stones to go like this because he, he's got it, but it's that decision-making of saying, I'm going to pass it into midfield rather than go, okay, here you go, fullback, or, or safer ball to the midfielder that's on the, on the angle that, that's an easy pass. He, he takes those, those risky passes into midfield. They get intercepted, and sometimes we get punished for it and people go stones what's he doing mm -hmm. and i think that if he improves that i think then you start to see what we all believe he can he can turn into be i don't i don't know if you have a different 100 yeah, percent, i agree but he has the capability of putting balls into areas that some set halves don't have so with that comes risk and if he gives it away because of the expansion of the team you're not in a place to recover so if he gives it to away in midfield they're straight on a counter-attack and he could be our number counter-attack. Yeah. So that comes with that responsibility. But like Sean said, if he learns to not make them simple, simple basic errors and just pass and just be comfortable with giving it to the fullback, giving it to, say, the holding midfielder is just in front of him, you just gain confidence from that. And all of a sudden then you defend him, becomes better, you feel much stronger, you feel much quicker. So that can only enhance his performances. Looking then to um, the other side of the pitch, and we're going to talk about one man that I've said we talk about every time on the show, and his five minutes is now, is David Silva. Um, scored that unbelievable free kick, and I think even even amongst there, it getting a little bit tough, he was still doing what he's done for us for the last 10 years, in which being in between the lines and trying to dictate play, Sean. Yeah, we, we always hear Pep refer to the best player that, that could play in a firm booth. <laughs> <laughs> because he literally can. He gets in these pockets and you just think, you, he can't get out of this. He gets, he receives his bodies on the right angle. He knows where the defender's coming and just moves it to the other side. 
that's in tight areas. And then when he's got that time, he's got that quality of pass to say, there you go, don't break a stride. He's right where the striker wants it, where the, where the, the wide player wants it. His vision, his decision making, you're talking a complete player. You really are talking a complete player. It's, a, it's, it's just beautiful to watch him. We were seeing there on our screens um, a group of junior citizens celebrating David Silva's goal. And you look at them and you think, oh, gosh, you guys, you've got no idea. You've got no idea. Literally, you've just seen three kicks now, but you've not seen the previous eight years. You know what I mean? That what he's been doing on a consistent basis. But I could talk all day about David, and I'm lucky enough to have his number in my phone. So <gasps> not a problem. But in regards to his ability, it's, it's like the only the disappointing thing was tonight was that he probably won't play now on Saturday having played the full match tonight but in regards to what he brings like Sean said when I think it was Solanke and um, Belling come close to him he's just pivoting on the spot and they can't get the ball off him because he's just so much in control and I'm aware of his body and their body it's frightening and it's things that you take for granted yeah, and his assist for um, Jesus's goal as well was just just goes on unnoticeable because it, you know it's so it's just so good and we're so used to seeing him do it. And I feel really blessed that we still get an opportunity to see him play a full game and that we've all got been able to see David Silva score score a goal tonight because it's really we really can't take it for granted, can we, Sean? The, the gifting of somebody of that level of talent that is played not only you know gifted the Premiership with his talent but that we've been able to watch for ten years. <laughs> yeah, he he just blesses the game. He makes it look so easy. You know, wherever he's receiving the ball, he's aware. I mean, I saw a, a, a bit t tonight where he got the ball and I, uh, Mendy was calling for it. And he didn't want to give it to Mendy until he knew it was right, which was actually best for Mendy to receive it at that time. <laughs> yeah. to then do Mendy, Mendy doesn't even know do. that. Mendy doesn't even know <laughs> that. Yeah. And so when I saw that, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm seeing something different here. And that, that tells you he's, he's so ahead. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, okay, Mandy's there. And he's like, no, you don't need it yet, Mandy. And when he gave it to Mandy, Mandy one touched it, drove forward, and, and play was happening. And I was just like, did he, he sort of saw that two, three plays yeah. before? Yeah. I, I mean, David Silva's just, he's just awesome. There was, he really is. Do you know what? It reminds, speaking of that moment, I remember watching that happen. And I was thinking, I was like, there was something off about that. And then listening to you, Sean, I've gone, someone was shouting at Silva to pass the ball. And you never shout at Silva to pass the ball. <laughs> Let Silva pass the ball when Silva wants to pass the ball. Um, I mean, obviously, he's coming to the end of his tenure. You've got to think, though, he, I think he could easily sit in that City team for another one, two years. Yeah, I don't think any, that's in question. I don't think David Silva's quality will diminish worth he goes I just think he wants a new challenge he deserves the opportunity and, and he's made that decision so whatever's best for him and his family I'm sure he's going to be comfortable with that decision and the fact that we've able to, to witness this is a credit like it's a shame that the fans that have adored him for all them 10 years since he's been here haven't got the opportunity but I'm here so <laughs> we're here we're, we're, we're really here we're, we're we, can tell you, really we can here. tell you about it <laughs> <laughs> um, but no David Silva we love you we appreciate you um, and I know one man that also does is Pep Guardiola and we can now hear what he had to say at the end of the game Pep, I wanted to start by asking Pep, about I wanted your to opponents. Start is it fair to say that? about your opponents is it fair to say they made it very very difficult for you tonight no, it was a real difficult game a real difficult game they play really good even the first half uh, yeah they play for you know for important things but they give a lot of credit what they have done uh, but at the end we won the game um, the, from our perspective or situation uh, was not really really important did they give you different sorts of problems to the ones that teams at the bottom usually give you in terms of being quite offensive, being quite attacking? Every game is different for the approach and uh, for what they do, but they have a quality. So I think they had the problems for a lot of injuries this season, but when you play with King, with a Solanke, with a Wilson, they are a fast player, they are so strong in the middle, in the set pieces, in the long balls for the throw-ins, in the corners. They are incredible, uh, a good team. Uh, and they, they, they play a real good uh, good game today. I want to ask you about John Stones, because he's just been out and done an interview and he's absolutely sick with the goal that you've conceded today. But how did you think he did coming back into the team? Uh, he was he was really well in defensive areas, so strong in the air. 
and um, when we was able to contact with the next line was really good so he he made a really good game I'm not sure what more you can say about David Silva but 10 years on from when the club signed him and running out of time obviously only one more game to go but another special moment he's, yeah, he's in incredible tonight. condition right now he's an incredible incredible top uh, top condition and the way the way he's playing is is really good in the mentality but now with the ball without the ball scoring goals is a second goal in a row in the free kick so yeah he's uh, he's playing really really well he needs a new contract pep sorry he needs a new contract <laughs> <laughs> nah, he decided to go so hopefully he can find the place he wanna he wanna play the last years how much do you think he's changed how we see a midfielder in this country. I said earlier, like he's been here 10 years. I think when he first signed, people wondered, could a small technical player yeah. like that, would it work in England? And obviously it has. Yeah. All the people think about it with this, uh, you know, with this situation, come here and play in this league will not be easy. But I think he shows the mentality of uh, about David uh, he has. So what is the, the reality was like this. Do you feel, even with the players you've coached, and you've coached maybe the best player ever in Messi, but does it feel like an honour to work with him and coach him? Yeah, of course it was. Of course. So. Yeah, he's a, a player is a huge competitor in that term, so it doesn't matter what happened, what he plays is really, really good. And let me ask you lastly, this was your 150th Premier League game. Mm -hmm. How have you found it compared to what maybe you expected when you walked through the door? No, it was fun. It was fun, tough moments, good moments, like uh, all the careers uh, or process when you are in one team. So, but in general, I cannot be more than satisfied to have uh, 150 Premier League games here. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's good. So it's a lot already. So, <laughs> yeah, part of my life will be all the time this period here in Manchester. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes, Pep Guardiola's 150th Premier League game and we've just seen um, an amazing stat as well about the game today which just gives Bournemouth even more credit. Bournemouth's 14 goal attempts is the most by an away side in Premier League in the Premier League against City in Pep Guardiola's four seasons at the oh, club wow. which just shows you um, how well Bournemouth did tonight. Of course in that interview there with Pep um, they were talking a lot about David Silva which, which we have been doing as well and David Silva has also been getting all of the love on social media. Um, as always we want to hear your thoughts on the game, your reactions, or tell us about David Silva. Tell us why you love him so much, and you can use hashtag WNRH. We'll have a little look at some of them. And David Silva is sort of the, the Twitter accounts that love stats dream. They're all bringing up loads of stats about him now. <laughs> so you've got Squawker, who have just said, David Silva now has 93 Premier League assists, overtaking Steven Gerrard to become the sixth all-time assist provider in the competition's history. And yes, absolute legend. Then you've got BR Football saying David Silva is putting on a show in the Premier League until the very end. And hopefully there might be a couple more shows before he goes. Um, and then we've got um, Football Stats. Again, see, that they, they're loving him. Um, and they're giving us all the stats about him. One goal, one assist, two chances created, 96% passing success rate tonight. Um, and then in the City Report, they're looking at the stat that we did as well. And for the first time ever in a home Premier League game under Pep Guardiola, City have faced more shots than they have taken. So Bournemouth had 14 shots and we had eight. Um, and then Vic Burr, just to, to finish it off. Oh, Vic. I think we're all crying for you here. Um, when you watch a beautiful David Silver goal, then think about how your trip to see him play the last match of the season was cancelled. I'm sorry. Uh, I think we are all in deep pain that uh, we w won't get the chance to give a really great send off to David Silver. But hopefully we will maybe one day he'll come back and we can have a David Silver celebratory party. It's got to happen. I think as well, it gets mentioned, doesn't it? Pepsi even mentioned it, that he's hopefully going to come back and, and have that, that all important game where we can, can thank him. Because, I mean, listen, we, I know we could spend a whole show talking about this, but how instrumental, and this is a question for you both, has David been in the 10 years that he's been here and the success of Manchester City since he arrived? I, I don't feel there's been a more consistent player since he's been at this team. Uh, um, Vinny, Sergio have done exceptional things, but injury has played a part in their kind of, and it, their reps is, is up there, obviously. But in regards to David Silva, I think on average he plays 25 games a season. Easily. Easy. Yeah. Like league games. So, and he performs at the highest level. So 
the consistency sets him apart. There was Yaya as well. So, sorry, I didn't mention him, but what he's don't done... Forget Yaya, no, I, I, don't no, forget Yaya. No, I don't forget Yaya. <laughs> no, I've just forgotten to mention him. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in regards to what David Silver has done, I don't know if there's been a consistent player as him in the league. Agreed. Like, since he's been in the league, has anyone performed as consistently as him whilst he's been at City? I'd, I'd argue the case for anyone. You're saying it and asking... Well, I'm going to say it and state it. There isn't. <laughs> the, the guy is just that consistent, you know. And I think we went from a place that before David, if we had a consistent player, we say, this player will give us a seven. David just gives us this eight and nine. Yeah. And, and that's where, and, and you're, you're, you're talking for 10 seasons like this. You, you, if, you find, if you find five games where you went, David, David's been off, that's what you'll find. And that is amazing as a player, to, to, to play at this level, the, the highest level, and go, go back and say, well, I, maybe I'll find five games where he, he's not been at his best. That, that, that's remarkable stats. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gutted. I we really all am. Are. I'm just like, I want every ounce of him. I want, like, the last games, I want, I, I want him because the guy is just remarkable yeah. in, in the way he is. And, yeah. Uh, the biggest compliment for me would be that I don't think any other fan at any other team dislikes him. No. And it's that's so the true. biggest compliment yeah. you can pay to any player, that every fan would love to have him in their team, loves to watch him, and all the players that are played against him rate him at the highest level. I think um, the, the only fitting send-off for him now in this situation is to see him lift the Champions League. Um, there was, there was, a, there was an interview amazing. this week that, that, that Walker mentions that and going, there's, there's a couple of players there that you say you kind of want to win it, not just for the club, but for oh, them who David kind Silver, of deserve yeah. it. David, like, obviously, Sergio, that I've been here from... The start the very start so for them to do that oh would be amazing and, and there was a great line off what you said Jolien that the, the the best thing you can say about David is that every fan but not only fans every player and every manager whenever they come up against David or talk about him just whack superlative and have the utmost respect and admiration for him I've said it before best player I've ever seen in a city shirt Barshon Goa Hey. <laughs> That's it, it's a wrap. <laughs> um, let's, let's, um, there, was, there was one, one man that we, we touched upon at half-time, we spoke about him before the game, uh, and he got that kind of crucial second goal in the end, Gabriel Jesus. Um, and, and even like you said, actually, when he went off, we kind of lost something that he was bringing to the pitch. So he's going to be really important now for the rest of the, the games that we play, Sean. Yes, it is. And I'm, I'm pleased he got, got his goal. And... I think this is what we will see with him. He, he'll continue to get his goal because, as, as Julian said earlier, he doesn't have to worry about, well, it's a girl going to be playing. He knows that he's starting the remainder of these games if, if the manager chooses him. And so he could be more relaxed and play his game. Um, his work rate, resorts, you know, some, some, some runs I thought, well, what's he doing? <laughs> but he goes and wins the ball, you know. He makes the, the defender sort of uh, misplace a pass and, and we end up winning, winning possession. So... We lost a little bit when he come off. And normally, we don't. You know, we, we get a, a Bernardo Silva or a Sterling, someone to be up the middle, uh, even De Bruyne at times. And it just looks as though, well, has a striker going off? We're still continue. But today, we, we've lost a little bit of that. And I think in Pep's mind, will be thinking, we definitely need Jesus uh, for, for the next game. Yeah. Do you feel, feel as well now, because, I mean, he is still so young, and, and we were talking before about how, you know, he has been on the cusp of taking over Sergio Aguero, but actually now with this kind of run of games and, and with the remaining two competitions, that this could almost be that final coming-of-age season where, I mean, he plays with such maturity, but actually really announced himself as going, I'm, I'm here now and I'm, and I'm going to be playing as much as I can. I think that's only going to happen when Sergio leaves, because as long yeah. as he's here, he, there's going to be a comparison, and probably... A couple of seasons after that, but if you if you compare his age and the numbers he's got to Sergio when he was an age, I think that would be the fair comparison. We're only a, uh, comparing him with Sergio's prime. Yes, but Sergio in the first couple of seasons, his numbers were high, but and his contribution was good. But I'm sure it wasn't much better than Jesus's and Gabriel. So, in regards to that, yeah, there the, the can't be we can't be disheartened that the fact that Gabriel Jesus is going to be the striker for many years to come.
Um, well, that's just about it for us on We're Not Really Here. Now, if you want to see... No. I <laughs> know. <laughs> and we can go and mourn the loss of David Silva because it does feel like we're a club slowly entering mourning of a player. We've still got a few games left, um, so fear not. But you can watch David in action and get the full game on City TV tonight. If you go on from midnight, you'll be able to watch the full game from there. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure as always, Sean. Thank you so much. Pleasure, Kyle. Natalie, thank you. Jolien, thank, thank you. you. Uh, and everyone. Massive, thank you to you guys at home as well. And please get in touch next up Arsenal at the weekend FA Cup semi-final big game we will be back before the game an hour before kickoff see you there enjoy the rest of your week come on City <laughs> come on City